Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. I'm on the road again, this time in the beautiful, absolutely gorgeous state of Utah. But I just had to comment on the latest news about what appears to be the real reason why Tucker Carlson was fired from Fox. The British Independent and a number of others are reporting that Tucker was basically fired in order to silence him. And the upshot is that Tucker had another couple of years to go in his Fox News contract. He had about 18 more months. And as part of that contract, he has a non-disparagement clause. He has limitations on what he can and cannot do in terms of public appearances. And all that basically prevents him from basically saying anything. I mean, it's, inter- it's suggestive that he has yet to make an official announcement or, or come out and say explicitly what the heck is going on, why he was fired. Moreover, Rolling Stone is reporting that they have eight sources that tell them that Fox News' top brass have been stockpiling incriminating information on Tucker, oppo research, so as to ensure his silence. So the theory there is twofold. As long as they keep paying Tucker, he has to comply with the strictures of the contract. And if he decides to go rogue, they've got oppo research to deter him from speaking out. And coincidentally, this is, of course, all happening as the 2024 presidential election season begins. Uh, And Mike Cernovich is actually arguing that they're silencing Tucker because the powers that be in D.C. want to start a war with Russia. Right. That's Cernovich's theory. Obviously, we'll have to see how all of that plays out. But the common factor, regardless here, the common factor is fundamentally about the oligarchically owned media silencing Tucker as a representative voice for the concerns of millions of Americans in the face of an upcoming election and even possible military conflict. Now, one frame that we can use to make sense of what's going on here and where we all need to go from here is the concept known as mediaocracy, the rule by media. And the upshot here is the legacy media dictates what narratives are allowed or disallowed in our national discourse. And any politician or pundit, for that matter, that transgresses those narratives, that challenges the media narratives, is deliberately removed from the public square. They're silenced. They're canceled. Now, many of you may be familiar with the network society theorist Balaji Srinivasan, he's hugely influential in internet architecture and crypto and the rise of blockchain. I was reading a transcript of him explaining how mediaocracy arose. It was very interesting. He sees the media take over the nation as basically beginning in the 1970s with the ousting of President Nixon. Uh, Interestingly enough, who Tucker was talking about a month back or so, the way the deep state ousted Nixon. But according to mediocracy theory, it's the corporate legacy media that ultimately ousted him. So back in the 70s, you had three privately held newspaper corporations, main ones. You had the Washington Post, which was owned by the Grams. You had the New York Times, which was owned by the uh, Salzburgers. And you had the Wall Street Journal that was owned by the Bancrofts back then. But now today, of course, is owned by the Murdochs, same guys who own Fox News. They all went after Nixon with the Post leading the way. And what Srinivasan points out is that essentially they ended up getting the most powerful man on the planet fired. It was a Rubicon crossing. It was the moment that the corporate media, the oligarchs in the media, showed that they were more powerful than the president. And the message was very clear. You play ball our way from now on or we're going to do the same to you. And so what Trina Vazen argues is that since the 1970s, we've become nothing less than a press-controlled state. And as Tucker's firing demonstrates, both pundits as well as politicians can be taken out if they don't play by the legacy media's rules, which is the ultimate irony, because if you think it through, right, that would in effect make the media the true insurrectionists. (laughs) They're the ones who actually staged a coup. They're the ones who actually overthrew democratically elected government, democratically influenced public policy. The supposed gatekeepers of the First Amendment are its worst offenders. Now, just so you know, this notion of mediocracy actually dovetails with the theory of virtual politics, right? Virtual politics involves so-called journalists and big tech oligarchs 
functioning as political technologists. And political technologists go beyond simply promoting their own favored candidates or causes like advocacy journalism. No, they actually manufacture entire political narratives, all ultimately in an effort to keep themselves in power. So political technologists act as political meta-programmers who basically construct the whole narrative by which our politics operates, such that what passes for Democrat participation is in point of fact entirely fake. It's nothing more than a carefully choreographed performance designed to maintain the political status quo that always, always, always enriches and benefits the ruling class of which the legacy media is king. So if this is the case, if we are living in the era of virtual politics and mediaocracy, where a press-controlled state dictates who can and who cannot be heard in the public square, then shattering, I mean shattering the legacy media as a legitimate source of information has to be of central priority to the patriot movement going forward. This has to be at the heart of Trump's campaign the presumed Republican nominee, and it has to be at the heart of the rising, para well, we often call it the parallel economy, but screw that. I'm thinking we need to re-envision this much more as a pa rising parallel civilization. Patriots today can't be satisfied with building merely an economy. We need to build and revitalize a vibrant, powerful, and flourishing civilization that completely overwhelms the press-controlled state and restores the glory and honor of a mass society rooted in faith, family, and freedom. And that is going to be a major focus of this channel moving forward. I'm going to be gathering some of the biggest and most powerful minds that are out there right now already building a network civilization comprised of an information and technological power that will absolutely crush the Jurassic legacy media and end this insurrection, this corporate coup once and for all. Stay tuned.